Hey, this is René. Welcome to this video where we will write on the uh, Super Trend System Expert Advisor that we already uh, created in the previous, I think, pr uh, three videos. So right now, <clears throat> we have a program that um, yeah realizes um, if there's a trend change of the Super Trend Indicator and then opens positions. Uh, what we still have to add is a TP, a SL, and a, a trailing stop. In this video, we'll have a look at TP and SL. Um, I mean, SL is maybe not really necessary because we want to close a position whenever the, um, uh, there is a new signal. But yeah, if, the, if there is a extremely long candle in the, uh, the candle did not close yet, so there is no, no new signal, it still makes sense to have a SL, I think. So what, what we want to do is we want to create two more um, uh, uh, variables here, which will be input variables, and we can say we we want to name them TP points and SL points, so we can provide a take profit and a SL in points. Or even better is now I have a better idea. We can have a factor, TP factor, factor, which can be for example two dot zero, and we do not want these SL points. So. What we want to do now is we want to say whenever we open a position, um, uh, this is the part where we open a position, we want to uh, calculate TP and SL before we open a position. So first of all, we want to calculate the current ask price or we want to receive the current ask price. We can do this by using the symbol info double function, which is pretty similar to the position get integer or position get double function. So in this case, we receive information uh, from a specific symbol. So we have to provide a symbol and then a identifier, which can be a symbol ask, for example. So this function call would return the current ask price. So we can choose uh, or we can we can take this ask price and now um, yeah first of all we can round it it always makes sense to round prices because sometimes there are some yeah um, problems with the accuracy so there may be problems if you try to open a position which has some uh, problems at the eighth uh, eighth digit for example but if we round it using the normalized double function, we can then um, choose a accuracy and, yeah, for example, the accuracy of uh, digits and digits is a system variable just like symbol, which will always return the amount of digits for the current chart. So we can now calculate a SL, which is, for example, um, the super trend value at position 1. So we want to place the SL, if there's a new signal, um, yeah, down here pretty much. And yeah, that's what we do. So um, we calculate this SL. We, of course, also want to round this uh, like this. And then we calculate ATP. And ATP, it shall be a factor or a... Um, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, it shall depend on the range or the um, distance from the entry price to the SL price. So we take this distance, which we can receive by yeah simply um, um, subtracting the SL from the uh, op open or ask price like this, and then we multiply this with the TP factor, and we of course add this to the ask price. So if we do it like this, this should work, and we then only have to round this. So normalize double, TP, and we round this to the precision of digits, pretty much. And then we can choose these parameters for the buy function that we did not use yet. And we can say we want to open at the current ask price, and we want to have a SL and a TP. And we can then go ahead, copy this whole block here for the, uh, for the cell uh, signal and we then do all the calculations based on the bid price of course because sell positions are always opened at the current bid price and then we can go ahead and calculate the SL which is of course again the super trend price at position one so at the last candle but then we want to subtract the distance from the SL to the current bid price from the bid price 
and then calculate the TP like this. And we, of course, have to update these parameters for the cell function as well. So this is bit, of course. Okay, if we do everything like this, we can give it a quick try and run this in the test because this should now take care of the TP and SL. So let us check the first signal. First signal is here, which is a cell signal, and this is not really... What is this? Oh, okay. Uh, the chart is not, not updated yet. We already see a buy signal here, which is... Okay, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so we see SL is placed below the super trend. This is working just fine. And the distance from... Whoops. From here is roughly 130 points. And this should be 260. Yeah, I think this is working. So we, we, we now have a TP and ASL. And you can see if this TP is reached, of course, the position will be closed there, as we saw here. Yeah, just make your own testing on your device. You can um, figure out what settings uh, are the best for this strategy right now by changing the inputs. So, for example, you can say you want to modify the... TP factor and you want to say, for example, 1.2. So this would move the TP closer to the open price. So if we just tested this, I will then, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do it on your own device, on your own PC, you will see it works. So let's jump back into the, into the source code and we can um, now discuss the changes that we applied in this video. So first of all, we um, created an input variable of type double, which is the TP factor. Um, and we then jump to the part in the code where we open a position. Until now, we just provided the lots and the symbol as parameter values for the buy function. We now always uh, also provide a entry price and ASL and the TP price. So first of all, we have to calculate these values. So the entry price is pretty easy. This is the ask price for a buy position and the sell price for a sell position. Make sure to always round prices um, so there will not be any unexpected errors. The TP calculation is a little bit more complex. We then take the position open price and add a multiple of the distance from the open price to the SL level. And yeah, we simply add this um, this distance to the to the open price, and then we have these three values, and we can then provide them as um, parameters for the buy function or for the sell function down here. This is it, pretty much. So in the next part, we should have a look at a yeah, maybe at a trailing stop. This makes sense, I think. And yeah, see you in the next video. I I think. And make sure to, to like and uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel and uh, recommend the video uh, or the this tutorial series to all your friends and, and your family maybe so everyone can benefit from automated trading. Okay, that's it. See you next time. Goodbye.